Lordly Splendor to this day is still the top dog in terms of survival and ease of use for players. It was a menace in PvP and PvE before Solo 2.0, which would allow you to survive extra shots that would have otherwise killed you. Solo 3.0 now has enhanced this area even more, to the point that you become unkillable with the right items applied, and that's partly where today's video will be aimed at. In my latest video, I'm going to show you why you should use the consecration aspect a lot more than what is shown, and how melee and everything will give you near unlimited melee, weapon damage increase, damage reduction, and active regenerated health over time. If you like Lordly Splendor and also like to smash things, then perhaps you want to sit in for this one here. But you know what else likes to smash? This channel right here. So if you enjoyed the video, then do leave a like, a sub, and turn on your notifications for more stuff like this in the future, as it goes a long way for me. Starting off the subclass, we'll be using Burning Mob so we can maximize on the damage being pulled off via light or heavy attacks. This of course can be swapped out if you feel like the super isn't good enough. Lordly Splendor's ability to create a sunspot on demand is one of the most handiest things that all titans should have on standby, as it allows you to survive some near-death experiences, and also allows you to do some extra damage to those that chase you, heal you, and improves the regen speed of your abilities. For us here, it allows us to play a very aggressive but fun melee build that will reward you for playing recklessly. For this, I have the following. For Aspects, I have Consecration that allows you to do a slight solo attack that launches a wave of solar and they can generate a slam to cause a bigger wave. We then have Raw and Flames which increases our solar ability's damage up to 3 stacks. It also allows our uncharged melee attack to deal with solar and scorch. For a fragment, we have Ember of Sindering, where your class ability charges faster when scorching targets, Ember of Ashes, where you apply more scorched stacks to targets, Ember of Imperium, which allows us to extend the duration of Restoration and Radiant via solar weapons or ability kills, and Ember of Searing, where defeating scorched targets grants us melee energy. For stats, we have 90 Resilience, 15 Discipline, and 17 Strength. With how the fragments and aspects will operate, you won't need to build into this area for a max of 100 strength, as that won't be needed. This will leave you room to explore and experiment with other stats if you want. For mods, we have Phantom Might for a 25% solar weapon buff, Melee Wellmaker for creating elemental worlds via melee, Explosive Wellmaker for creating worlds via explosions, such as grenades or a slight melee attack, Bountiful World for times 2 elemental worlds created, and World of Life for increased regeneration speed. We also have Classy Restoration which will also help with giving us a non-stop health regen over time. As mentioned with the setup, you can do your charge slide melee attack on the Guru Combatants and if done right, you'll be able to create a ton of wells and also get your melee back at full charge. This can be very effective at taking out Guru Combatants with Mages or Ultras involved, as Explosion and Stacks of Scorch applied should be able to one-shot them all. If you mess that up, then that's no problem, as you can melee set combatant again and get melee energy back thanks to the Ember of Searing. It's quite an effective ad clearing ability that can delete waves of ads for little and reward you with a ton of benefits that I'm sure you won't complain about. For weapons, we don't have a specific loadout in mind as anything can go here, but I would recommend you go with a close quarter setup considering how the build plays out. For primary, I have the Deliverance Fusion Rifle with Cornered and Chill Clip, which is actually a perfect weapon to use in the build. Not only are fusions good with their effective range, but Chill Clip is useful for slowing down combatants who are aggressive to catch off guard. Just two hits with the weapon will slow or freeze them, and then that sets them up for you to do your melee charge attack and go from there. If you want this weapon specifically, then you need to do the raid and hope you get the roll to drop. But if not, then you can always get the Riptide Crucible Fusion Rifle instead, which can drop auto loading and chill clip in one. In secondary, I have the Callus Mini Tool with Slideways and Surrounded, and although I want to get the version with Incandescent instead, I thought it through a bit and found that the current role is much better. Considering that we are sliding a lot in the build and will be surrounded 9 out of 10, it's perfect at doing this job here and there and see no complaints. If you haven't got one, then go out and farm for one as you are at least guaranteed to get the role similar to mine at least once. If not, then any solo weapon here is good to use as long as it fits the CQC aspect. For Heavy, we have the Lament Exotic Sword and thought that this will make a perfect setup for the build in general as CQC. As we have Thunder Might on and Lowly Splendor, we can use this to effectively take on bosses of all types at close ranges, do some hefty damage and not worry about dying so much since we have active heals going. This of course can backfire much higher difficulties, but still works for the rest of the content in game. For the stats, as mentioned, we need resilience and strength to be at the same or near same level of each other, as these two stats will be used constantly throughout our adventure. 
Now the great thing about the build is how self-efficient it is and how you can be very effective at balancing out all your stats and not just the one. I have my resilience at 90 as the passive regen at the moment is pretty good where it is. We also have the Ember Sindering as well which will actively give us class ability energy back from Scorched Targets. So in many ways we can reduce this down to 70 and still get the same passive regeneration like nothing has changed. With how simple this area is, you won't need any mods to help circumvent this area, so just follow what's shown and you should be golden. For strength now, we have ours at 70 and I test this build out quite a bit to see if having additional mods will be needed for the setup to work, or we can just rely on the subclass alone. Overall, I found that simply having the subclass aspect and fragments are all that you need to make the build work a charm, and no additional mini mods, strength mods, or even Monte Carlo will be needed. This is great, as that means your weapons can be whatever you see fit, and your mods only need to be elemental worlds and nothing else. This will leave you space to invest into intellect, recovery, or even discipline, and having it at 70 is more than enough for you to achieve this. Discipline now is at 50, and to be fair, we won't be used as much in the build compared to our melee, although it will be used if things get too hectic and our melee is enough. Having the innovation mod for grenade energy return upon collecting orbs of power, an explosive finisher for fully restoring your grenades upon finishing combatants is more than enough for the build in general. Left over wise, we have Harmonix Typhon times 2 for creating worlds of power via solar weapons, and Sword Scavenger for bonus reserves when picking them heavy. So, let's compile our list into one so you can get an overall idea as to what's happening. For head, we have Resilience, Harmonix Siphon times 2, and Font of Might mod. Arm, we have Strength and Melee Wallmaker mod. Chest we have Strength, Armor of the Dying Sun, because of Dampner, Explosive Wellmaker mod. Leg we have Strength, Sword Scavenger, Innovation, and Bound for Well mod. Mark with My Resilience, Classy Restoration, Explosive Finisher, and Well of Life mod. A very classy build indeed to use for the season. This solo 3.0 build will have you go mad with the amount of melee connections you make back to back, and then get a bucket load of buffs chucked at you for successfully pulling it off. I have not had this much fun with the mini focus build since Stasis for the Titans were released, and even now I still use it every now and then. The simplicity of the build allows users to build weapons and mods to how they please, as the main aspect of fragments will be the key in carrying the build from start to finish, and this here will allow you to experiment further on what type of build you want the build to come out as. You can add on War My Cell mods to the build, so you can always create cells for your abilities, and then from here you can add on mods that increase our damage or reduce incoming damage as you please. If that's not your thing, then you can go with a Frankenstein type setup, where you have elemental wells, charge from light, and all my cells so you always have something prepared on hand. It's incredibly versatile, and that's only a tip of the iceberg for players. How this build plays in high end content though will definitely vary in how you use your charge melee and when. If you use this in legend content where the difficulty is tough but not impossible to master, then you'll be pretty fine to take on whatever content you are in, as long as you watch how much damage you take. A prime example of this is playing the moon psyops on legend mode on the first encounter. The part where a tomb ship and a ton of combatants chasing you is a perfect situation to pull your slide melee off, but considering how much damage you take at all angles, if you don't have healing buffs active then you get chewed up pretty badly. This is the same with the other Cyrus mission if you don't plan it out carefully, as the build will give you the survival you need, but you must not play carelessly. Anything mass and above now will pose difficulty and will require you to actively wait for the right moment to pull this off, so you can back off behind cover before things escalate. In my opinion, this is more of a legend below build that should be used in content where a ton of battles are grouped up, like pins on a bowling alley. It has the survivability to allow players to do their move as many times as they like, but it requires key time to get your midi fully back from doing so. Still, if you use this in a new containment activity, you'll see how perfect the build is in these environments, and why mean such a fun build can lead to other similar builds in the near future. So enjoy guys! So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you dig that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by, stay safe, and I'll see you all in the next one.